Building a gaming PC right now can be quite expensive. Even if you want to go with used parts, uh, everything's kind of skyrocketed. So in this video, I wanted to show you how to build a $240 gaming machine that'll handle 1080p across the board. It's not a super top the line machine, but the price doesn't reflect that either. This is for people on a really tight budget who just want to have fun gaming. Now I've kind of racked my brain. Uh, I've thought of a bunch of different combinations that we could do and everything that we're going to be using in this video is used from eBay, but some of these parts can be picked up on Amazon. I'll leave links for everything in the description. But starting out here with the base of this build, what I've got is a good old Optiplex. This is a 770. And right now in 2025, I'd say this will be about the lowest end version that you want to use. You can get out cheaper going with a lower end model of an Optiplex, but you're going to get stuck with something like a fourth gen or a fifth gen Intel CPU. And with this 770, we've actually got an i7-9700. And you don't always have to go with an Optiplex. HP also makes the Pro Desk with this CPU. Uh, just make sure you're getting the tower version if you're not going to go with a low profile GPU. But these can be had for around $120. And you can always bid out on one. I got mine for $116 shipped to the door, so that's exactly what we're going to be using here. Again, we've got that i7-9700. This came with 16 gigs of RAM pre-installed and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. You can add more storage if you need it, and you can always run an external drive for your Steam games if you want to go that route. But getting in here a bit closer, one of the big downsides to this Optiplex 770 is the power supply itself. It's a 280 watt power supply with no external eight pin power connector for a GPU. So you could always upgrade this. And over on Amazon, they do sell like a 500 watt. I think I sell a 450, but they're anywhere from 100 to $140. So that's gonna tack on a lot of money for this. You could also go with an adapter and use like an ATX if you wanna modify it. But we're gonna make it as easy as possible and use a GPU that doesn't require power. Another route that some people take is using a SATA to 8-pin PCIe adapter. And with this 280 watt power supply, we'll have those two SATA connectors, but it's only realistically going to give us around 100 watts of power safely. So for some of the GPUs that require 8 pins, it's just really not going to be enough power. Now, if you have to go that route and let's say use an RTX 3060 that requires extra power, I would suggest upgrading the power supply. And you could always try it if you want. It's really up to you. And I suggest the RTX 3060 due to pricing. You could go with an RTX 4060, but uh, we're still kind of limited by the system we have already. And originally, I was going to go with the Intel Arc A380. This is just the low profile version, but you can pick up the mini ITX version that's going to fit in here just fine. But unfortunately here, this Optiplex 770 doesn't support resizable bar from the BIOS. So performance will really suffer using an Arc card. I really wanted to go that route, but unfortunately it's just not gonna be doable here with this unit. So I finally settled on a GPU and what we've got here is the RTX 3050 six gig version. It would be nice if we had eight gigs, but the six gig versions don't require any extra power. This is the low profile version and I bought this one used on eBay, but uh, the longer bracket they sent along with it isn't the correct bracket. So I will have to find a way to kind of mount it in here. But if we take a look over there right now, you can see they've got the mini ITX versions. Again, the six gig doesn't need an eight pin PCIe connector. So it looks like anywhere from like 118 or 120 up to 140, and you can always bid one out. That would probably be the best bet. Just throw a bid at it that you're comfortable with and wait it out. So we'll just go ahead and slot this right in. And I do wish they gave me that longer bracket to fit it, but I will find a way to kind of mount this in here. If you're going to be building something in the mini tower version, just go with like the ITX model. They're around the same price over on eBay. So what I've done here is just use one of the mounting holes on the back and an old bracket. It's going to be fine. It's not going to go anywhere in this system. And we're basically done. Another couple things you could do is add some new thermal paste to the CPU if you want to, but I've already tested this and we're not hitting thermal throttle at the uh, TDP that it's set at, out of the box. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the operating system. Jumping right in here, there's a few things that I like to do with these older machines uh, just to get a bit better performance out of them, especially because this is an office machine. It's really meant to run at like 65 watts, even on this i7-9700. Eight cores, eight threads. Uh, we've got 16 gigs of RAM with this one. It's that DDR4 at 2400 megatransfers per second. So nowhere close to newer DDR5 at, you know, 7400, 8000 megatransfers per second. Intel UHD 630 graphics with that 9700. 
but we've installed the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 with six gigs of VRAM. Still on the lower end side, but you know, if you wanna keep the price low, this is kind of where we need to be right now, especially with prices, even used prices right now. With this i7-9700, uh, I've got the wattage listed down here. We're just gonna run a stress test on it real quick. So with this Dell system, we're at 65 watts, and that's basically across the board. It does have a little bit of a boost, but it's not gonna stay there long at all. I think it does go up to like 90 for 10 seconds. It's not gonna help out in the long run. So what I like to do is use a third-party application known as Throttle Stop with these older Intel machines. 65 watts with this chip is gonna be great, but if we can put a little more to it, it will get the clocks up on more of those cores while we're gaming. Of course, this thing will probably get a bit hotter like this, but uh, we're gonna see what happens here. So from throttle stop, just go ahead and open this up for the first time. It's relatively easy to use. What I do is set high performance mode. Right down here, TPL. We're gonna enable the controls. And from here, you can see 65 and 122. So our PL1 and PL2. I'm gonna set this to 80 for both. We're also gonna take that turbo time up as far as it'll go. We'll click apply. Okay. We wanna save this and turn it on. So now when we head back, remember we were up to 65 with this. We'll run that stress test again and it's gonna get us real close to 80 watts sustain. And the clocks will be a bit higher here on all of those cores. So yeah, I mean, if you don't wanna do it, you don't have to, but it can help out in the long run. Next thing I do here is open up our NVIDIA control panel, and I believe it's now the NVIDIA app. So this might look a bit different from the older versions, but what we're gonna do here is go to graphics, global settings, and we wanna find power management mode. It's gonna be set to normal once you install everything. Prefer maximum performance. That way we can get a little more out of this RTX 3050. And there's one more thing that I like to do here. So I usually use Afterburner uh, to monitor everything. Right here, we can do a little bit of overclocking. And even in this case, with this card, just going up like 150 on the core clock, 150 on the memory clock has worked out really well. You may need to back down 100 on both of these. You just kind of got to experiment with it. But I know for a fact with the setup that I have, plus 150 on the core, plus 150 on the memory clock, We'll apply it. Now we've got a little bit of an overclock on that RTX 3050. So yeah, just to try to get as much out of the system as we can. That's exactly how I set these up. So with that out of the way, I did want to show you some benchmarks. And remember, we're working with like a $240 PC. First up, we've got Geekbench 6. On this i7-9700 with throttle stop enabled up to 80 watts, we get a single core of 1,569, multi 6,401. Really low by today's standard. And recently on the channel, I did a small form factor build uh, coming in much more expensive than this machine, around $600. And we used a 5700G over there, 8,989 multi-core. So it just kind of goes to show you this i7 is showing its age right now. But again, we wanted to keep everything really cheap. I also ran 3D Mark Time Spy, and I actually expected a little more out of this system. We got a total score of 4,961. And I mentioned the other build we did, the small form factor unit with that 5700G. That was powered by a low profile RTX 5060. And over there, we were up to 13,038. So there's a big difference here when it comes to these synthetics for sure, but there's also a pretty big price difference also. First game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. And with only six gigs of VRAM here, we are kind of limited going up to like ultra with a lot of DLSS. Right now we're at medium with DLSS set to quality and we're getting an average of around 73 FPS. It feels really good like this and at medium 1080, of course, we're not at 4K with this system with ray tracing set to ultra, but we can get more out of this. Unfortunately, with this 3000 series RTX card, we can't access Nvidia's DLSS frame gen and especially not DLSS multi frame gen but we can use FSR frame gen with games that support it. And with Cyberpunk, I was able to take it up to high settings with FSR frame gen on. We're still at 1080, getting around 90 FPS on average with it. And it's generating a lot of extra frames here, but it feels pretty decent the way it is. 
Another one I wanted to test here was God of War Ragnarok, and I do think that this is one of the best PlayStation ports over to PC. Very well optimized, works on a lot of systems. Going in, wasn't sure what to expect, but we're at 1080 medium with DLSS set to balance, and by the end, I had an average of 87 FPS, so it's more than playable like this. Marvel Rivals actually performed way better than I thought, and for the most part, when I'm testing this on different machines, I'm usually at 1440p. We've got something like an RTX 4060. With this 3050, we're gonna be stuck at 1080 medium with DLSS set to balance, but it's not gonna drop under 60. Of course, with a system like this, I mean, there's thousands of older games that are gonna be fully playable. Here's Fallout 4, 1080 high, getting over 100 FPS on average. And I'll tell you, I mean, we're way up there right now, but as soon as I kind of get out a little bit, it does drop down to around 117. Usually lock this down at 60, and on this system, obviously, I mean, it's gonna play at 60 all day. You know I had to test out Forza Horizon 5. We're at 1080 high settings with no DLSS, no FSR. This was much better than I thought it would be, and I know it's a very well optimized game, it works on a lot of systems very well, but I didn't expect to get over 120 FPS on average. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and 4 at 1080 high with no DLSS, I just locked this down at 60 and it's a really good experience like this, wouldn't mind playing this for a while on this system. And the final game I tested here was Doom the Dark Ages, 1080 low settings. And the reason we had to go down to low is because in the settings menu for this game, it does give you, you know, how much VRAM you're going to be using. Even at medium, it was over 6 gigs. So that's going to be a big downside to something like this. But there's not much else we can do with a setup like this to get that $240 price tag. And at low settings with DLSS set to balance, we got an average of around 64 FPS. The big question here is, is something like this worth building right now? And the only person that can answer that is you. If you're happy with 1080p gaming and you don't want to spend a ton of money, then you can definitely build something like this. Keep your eye out on eBay and Amazon for cheaper parts. You could also put something like this together right now and then later on upgrade the GPU, but that's about all we're going to be able to upgrade on this system the way it is right now. It's an older Optiplex and you kind of get what you pay for. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links to everything I used in the description below. And if you do end up building one with a better GPU or a bigger power supply, let us know what you're using in the comments below. That's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.